Hello there, it's Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I am here today to talk to you about the brand new Lindor's, Lindor's Abbey Single Malt um, MCDXCIV, or 1494. Uh, the, came out yesterday at the time of recording, um, yet another uh, single malt distillery that's releasing one of their first releases. There seems to have been a few this year already, um, and so far the ones that I've tried have been fantastic, so let's see what this one's like. But before I tell you what it tastes like, let me give you a bit of background information about the distillery and Abbey itself. Lindor's Abbey is a Tyronesian monastery built in the late 12th century on the edge of Newburgh, Fife. It's claimed that the first written reference to whisky being produced in Scotland relates to the Abbey, as the Exchequer Rolls of 1494 list that, by order of King James IV, eight bowls of malt be presented to the monk Friar John Corr to produce aqua vitae. It's thought that Friar Corr resided at Lindor's, and it is more than likely that distilling of some form was taking place well before this date, and as such the Abbey has become known as the spiritual home of Scotch whisky. Now a ruin, the grounds and a neighbouring farm became to be owned by the Mackenzie Smith family, who held the title of Custodians of Lindor's. Drew Mackenzie Smith and his wife Helen had long wanted to build a distillery to honour the historical links to whisky in their grounds, and excavation began in 2013. However, archaeological investigations delayed full construction until 2016, with a visitor centre opening in October 2017 and distillation commencing in December of that year. The water for whisky production is taken from a borehole near the distillery, meaning the water used is from the same source as would have been used at the Abbey. Barley is sourced from the nearby Fife region, and in June 2019, local farms have supplied concerto barley from fields that would have been in Abbey lands. While most new whisky distilleries have produced a gin to provide an ongoing revenue stream while spirit was maturing in cask, Lindor's Abbey instead released an aqua vitae based on recipes found at the Abbey. Whereas originally this would have been essentially new make spirit infused with herbs found in the local area, Lindor's Abbey aqua vitae uses a blend of herbs and spices including Douglas fir and sweet Sicily along with a maceration of dried fruits. The distillery has one wash still and two spirit stills, which are dubbed sister stills. This allows for experimentation with differing cuts to produce a variety of different flavour profiles. Maturation also takes place with a vast array of cask types, with a combination of ex-bourbon casks, STR or shaved, toasted and recharred wine barrels and Oloroso sherry butts being used for their first release. Lindor's Single Malt is the first bottling available to the general public, although a limited edition was previously bottled for 1494 club members. The commemorative release of 12,750 bottles is exactly the same liquid as the standard bottling with just a small addition to the front label. Lindor's Single Malt is bottled at 46% ABV and no colouring or chill filtration is used. So. Let's see what it tastes like. Now, I uh, was fortunate enough to visit the distillery when I was working for Gordon McPhail in my previous role before opening this shop. Uh, and we spent three days, I think it was, uh, at the distillery uh, at a national team meeting. Uh, loved the place, absolutely fell in love with it. We were in discussions to be the UK distributor. Um, that kind of fell apart, unfortunately, but the time we spent at the distillery was fascinating. Got to meet Drew and Helen, um, took a tour of the distillery. It's still relatively early days. I think we're looking at about probably two, maybe even three years ago, so they were still at their early stage the aqua vitae had come out which is this and i do highly recommend they've kind of struggled with the aqua vitae because it doesn't really fit in any particular category it's really really interesting and i do recommend it it's um it's not a gin it's not a whiskey it's very much of its own thing um it's brilliant as a long drink with ginger ale also works well kind of as a dash in a sparkling wine but it's kind of almost too unusual for a mainstream audience. So it's quite niche, but I do very much recommend the Aqua Vitae. It was never an advert for the whiskey though. This was the thing. It was, um, you know, we're not doing a gin, but this is not what the whiskey is going to be, as some other new distilleries have done, where they've worked with other distilleries to produce a single malt or a whiskey that is sort of an indication of what we might be looking at. Rasse, for example. Um, so it's lovely to see, finally, single malt on a on the market and B on my shelves as well. It was a bit kind of last minute that I managed to get confirmation of getting this stock in. I love the bottle um, and the bottle itself um, with this shape on the bottom. Um, there is a story behind the bottle and this is purely from memory because it's not referenced in any of the, like on the website, but I remember Drew telling us that the shape of the bottle was based on when they were doing their excavation work, they found that there were pillars sort of as um, structural, 
um, not scaffolds, but kind of like holding the building together that were this shape and kind of had this texture to it. Um, it was kind of like structural, but also um, aesthetic as well. So the bottle itself, and I can't remember whether it's that shape or this shape of the pillars that they found um, within the Abbey grounds, is referenced in the bottle. So there's a lot of stories going on just in terms of the packaging. So Drew, incredibly passionate. Helen was absolutely lovely. Um, a really good team working there. There, there's a lot of uh, kind of experimentation going on with this distillery. I remember actually talking to uh, the team at the time and they were saying, yeah, we, we're a new distillery. We're getting approached by lots of other producers who are saying, would you like our cast for maturation? Um, and I know this is something that uh, Spirit of Yorkshire had dealt with as a new distillery. They kind of get approached by various distilleries around the world, some small, some not, beer, wine, all sorts of stuff, um, because cask uh, buying and selling is a, a revenue stream in itself, and it, there is a, a market for it. So they had a lot of casks of kind of unusual things going on, and it was like Oloroso and PX and various wines and all sorts of things like that. And they're using that kind of cask makeup that they've got is not really kind of set in stone. So I don't know what the exact ratio is of the ex-bourbon, Oloroso Sherry, and then the STR cask. Now STR, Jim Swan did do a bit of consultancy with Lindors. So yeah, anything that Dr. Jim Swan touched, um, God rest his soul, has got to have an STR at some point or another. So uh, it is bottled at 46%. Um, I am very much looking forward to this. As I say, um, the new distilleries that have been coming from Scotland recently, so Torovec, Rase, that sort of thing, have been absolutely fantastic, and I really hope this is up to scratch. I'm taking a little bit of this because this, the rest of this, is going to be used in the uh, tasting that I'm doing. It's now live on the website, and at the time of recording, there are still tickets available. Um, it's called New Kids on the Lock. Well chuffed with that. Um, and I'm even more impressed with the logo that I managed to get with it because that's the original New Kids on the Block logo that I've adapted. Um, spent a good five minutes on the PowerPoint on that. Um, but uh, that is going to be part of it. So we now have an official lineup of Lindors. Uh, we've got Torovec inaugural release. We've got Rase Batch 1. We have uh, a bottle of Daffmill that I managed to get hold of. I've got Nick Nien, And I've got one other, and it's completely gone from my head. Um, anyway, so we're here to talk about Lindors anyway. So on the nose, there's a lovely fresh fruity feel here. It's quite zingy. There's a touch of citrus, but there's also some red berry coming through, which I'm fairly certain is the STR wine casks. A little bit of pepper. A very, very soft smokiness, but I don't think this is peated barley in here. I think this is the cast makeup. It's the cast kind of the oakiness is giving it a touch of like a very sweet smoke, really in the background. It's quite light, it's delicate, but it's really, really enjoyable. There's a lovely fresh, almost kind of like citrus peel feel to it, which then travels into a slight sweetness. There's a touch of white chocolate and caramel. Very, very, it's, it's light and delicate and kind of spring-like. Um, and I think a lot of people do associate, so this, this counts as a lowland distillery, and when you do these sweeping generalizations of what Scotch whiskey regions taste like, lowland whiskies tend to get thrown into, it's light, it's grassy, it's quite delicate. And this kind of does tick that lowland whiskey generalization box. It's a very spring-like whiskey. It, I, I bet this is really, really nice, lightly chilled, and I've not even tried it yet, this is based purely on the nose. Lightly chilled on a summer's day, I think this, you, you just nose this. There's a lot going on there and it's kind of evolving. I'm starting to get kind of chocolate notes in here now. There's a bit of milk chocolate. That red berry is turning into uh, like dried raspberries. I do like that nose. I, I, it's really fresh, it's really inviting. Right, let's see what it tastes like. Starts off with quite a creamy mouthfeel and then lightens a bit. Ooh, and right now, as I've swallowed, and I've got the remainder of the, the whiskey left in my mouth after swallowing, I'm getting an overriding feel of shredded wheat. Shredded wheat with milk, and possibly shredded wheat that's had, again, red fruit kind of over the top, and you had a mouthful of that. Really, a really wheaty feel to it. Very, very unusual. Was not expecting that to come through at all. So as it is on the nose, it's it's on the lighter side, it's delicate, it's fresh. There's less of that citrusy element 
but you do get that red berry feel to it. The creaminess is from the ex-bourbon casks and it starts off creamy, but then lightens. Um, the, but it stays kind of a really nice mouthfeel, but rather than staying thick and creamy, it then lightens up a touch. But I really do get overriding shredded wheat, not Weetabix or any other cereal. It really, and I don't really eat shredded wheat. I've, it's been years since I've had shredded wheat, but it really feels like I've just eaten a mouthful of that. You get that fruitiness as well. What a lovely whiskey. And, and what's great about this is with these new distilleries, they're kind of going in different directions. This arguably is more of what people would consider, I think, a classic Lowland style, but it's got a lovely fruity character on its own. And I really do like that cereal element to it, but it's not, it's not malt. It's more, like I say, wheat. It's, it's much, it's lighter than a, than a, a malty whiskey, you know, a, a malted barley that gives you that kind of, you know, Cheerios, Horlicksy feel. This is a grain, this, it, it tastes like a lighter grain, like wheat. It's really, really interesting and, I love that flavor. I love that delicate touch of it. You do get a bit of a bite of oak on there and kind of that youthfulness is coming through. And I think, I actually think that's what's giving it that shredded wheat feel. I think that's what's lifting the flavors and making it, and this is where I go back to my uh, now regular analogy of an orchestra of flavors what the, the youthfulness is doing is bringing what would be a lower multi note, actually raising it slightly and it's going slightly higher note and that's what's making it feel like wheat. And it really, yeah, again, really evocative of shredded wheat that's been in milk but not really soaked. So you get almost that slightly dry shredded wheat where there's still a little bit of crunch on it. But again, that red berry element from those wine casks is complementing, you know, shredded wheat with raspberries, strawberries, possibly even a, a little couple of red currants on the milk. You pour the milk over, but you kind of start eating it without letting the shredded wheat go kind of soaked and soggy. Um, it's got that fresh bite to it as well. Um, like I say, again, as with the nose, very spring-like, very much a whiskey for a summer's day. Uh, I can imagine this definitely as a, as a long drink as well. I think this will work really well as a cocktail and there's gonna be some people going, oh, well, that means it's no good then. All right hardcore tweedy beardy whiskey drinkers a bit of a generalization but you know if you're a hardcore whiskey drinker it's it's kind of like oh you shouldn't put any with cocktails well actually you know a lot of whiskies do really work well in cocktails nearly all of them if not all of them um and this is one that has the flexibility that light touch that delicate delicacy that little bit of bite that actually i think in a long drink you know a scotch and soda with this is going to be absolutely fantastic i love that berry fruity element to it this is a different beast altogether to the Torovec, to the Rase, to the Ardna Merkin. And actually, this will fit really well in the tasting event because I struggle to think kind of, there's not really a duff one among them. They've all been absolutely fantastic. So um, price-wise, uh, $44.99, which is very reasonable. That's kind of what we're looking at now for, for new bottlings. It's that 45, 50 quid point. Um, the commemorative release, uh, there were 12,750 bottles. Um, you might not be able to pick it up, but it is literally that. That is on both sides of the front label. It says commemorative first release. And if I do, let's get it the right way around, do that and that. If you can see the difference, there we go. One line. That is it. This is that's where I drop it on the floor as well. Uh, commemorative first release, um, and I've had plenty of people asking me for that, um, and they're not that bothered about the standard because that's the way the market is at the moment. The liquid inside, exactly the same. There is no difference between the two. It is literally a line of text on the label, and that is it. It's exactly the same price. But if you're looking to drink this, it makes no difference. If you are a collector, then that's why you're probably going for it. And to be honest it's okay fine that's what you want to do but fantastic i'm really really impressed i'm really intrigued to see where that goes i'd love to see where that lighter touch goes as it starts to get older as well but it's a lovely fresh fruity really like uh, it's uh, kind of very spring-like whiskey and it's 
almost you could look at uh, Lindor's being spring, you've got Torovec that maybe could be summer, you've got Rase that would be autumn, Arden, no actually Arden Merkin would be autumn and then uh, Rase would be winter. So you've got these new distilleries that are coming out and bringing the earliest releases and you've got a brilliant sort of range of flavour profiles that actually will go through the year. Uh, and we honestly can't complain about that. So that's me done. Uh, I do recommend the Aquavitae as well. I have some tasting stock in the shop of that, and I do recommend trying it if you're coming in to buy a bottle of the single malt. Um, the commemorative is sold out. Um, I didn't get many of them, and they went like that, as you would expect. But I do still have some stock of the um, standard bottling, as I'm calling it. And from what I gather, Stocks of that are pretty good. So, you know, I should hopefully have it in pretty much regularly. Um, so it is available from our website, www.spiritspecialist.com. Um, but you're more than welcome to pop into the shop. But don't forget, I do offer UK nationwide delivery if necessary. Um, and I highly, highly recommend it. Yet another new Scotch distillery that has done a fantastic job. Bravo, guys. Uh, really, really good stuff. So that's me done. And I shall see you at the next video. Cheers.